Matt, and I'm the vicar here, and um, it's great to welcome you. Welcome um, especially to Annabelle's uh, family, Nikki and Kieran, uh, and godparents and family here for um, Annabelle's baptism. So it's lovely to have you with us. Um, welcome if you're um, here for the first time or visiting us um, or watching at home um, um, uh, on the live stream as well. You're really warmly welcomed. It's great to be with you. 
The psalmist uh, says this, he says, praise you, I praise you God because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. We've got a brilliant visual aid of that this morning in Annabelle. We're going to be saying thank you uh, to God for her and for, uh, for making her. Um, so that's uh, great. And we're starting, um, it's brilliant we've got that visual aid because we're starting a new series thinking about our identity, who we are, who are you? I wonder how you'd answer that question. And we're going to see from God's word today that we are wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made by God. So let me uh, lead us in prayer. Then we're going to sing a song together that points us right at the start of our service to this creator God. So let me lead us in prayer. Creator God, we praise you for making us and for making everything there is. Please help us to root our identity in you and in your son, the risen Jesus. And just as he filled the disciples with boldness and fresh hope, by your spirit, strengthen us to proclaim his risen life. Please fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. For you are made by God. God made everything creation cries out to us. It sings the Father's song. Shall we stand and we're going to sing of that together?
tell the wonders of creation's king. I don't know if you spotted in that song, but the wonders of creation, um, uh, well, God's not finished yet. There is more to come. There is a new creation that God has promised. Let me praise God as we stand on our feet. Father, we praise you. Praise you for all the wonders that you created. We praise you that you are our maker. You deserve all the glory for who you are and for making us. Help us to remember that, we pray, and to shape who we are around who you have made us to be. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please do take a seat. So I mentioned uh, that we are, well, um, two things today. Uh, we're going to have a little baptism in a moment for Annabelle. Uh, but we're also starting this series thinking about this uh, question up on the screen. Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? I wonder how you'd answer that question. We're thinking about this issue of identity. And um, just after Easter for a few days um, with the family, we got away and we had a bit of a break up in the northeast of England. And it was beautiful. I know the Wirral's great, isn't it? But it was brilliant. Who's got a favourite place? Could be in this country, around the world. Anyone want to shout out a favourite place? Somewhere you've been or you'd love to go? Skipton. Skipton. There we go. Thank you very much. There we go. Karen. South of France. Oh, yes, there we go. That would be very nice. New Zealand. New Zealand. Rosie wants to go to New Zealand. It's brilliant. Any of the go on, Sam? Belgium. Ah, oh, you like the cycling, don't you? Lots of cycling in Belgium at the moment. Brilliant. What's that? Whistler Mountain. There you go. Hankering back for Canada. Yeah, very good. Very good. The Australian bush. Okay, we're going to be here a long time. There's lots. It's brilliant, isn't it? Okay, go on, Ellie. Last one. Canada, another one for Canada, brilliant. Well, we went to the north, we didn't go quite as far as some of the places you want to go, but we had a lovely time and saw some amazing scenes, some amazing hills in the background, amazing coast, the sea, uh, some islands off the sea, and we saw some amazing creatures as well. I've got a little picture that we bought um, of, I think, the favourite thing that I saw. Can you see that? Look at that. We went on a boat and we went out uh, in, on the sea, and we saw loads and loads and loads of puffin birds, and they are stunning with their coloured beak. And we saw lots of other birds as well, and we saw seals um, on the rocks. Let me see if I can um, put that up on there for you. There we go, there's the puffin. And we saw seals on the rocks. We even saw some dolphins in the water on the way back, amazing. We thought about your favourite places. Anyone got a favourite animal? Could be from anywhere in the world. Oh, look at that. Hands straight up here. Let's go over here. Uh, Jed. A jaguar. They don't have those in the northeast, but um, that would be, that'd be fun. Katie. Flamingo. Okay, nice. Uh, George, go on. A dog. There we go. Some of us might have one of those. Um, I imagine no one's got a jaguar, but you might have a dog. Brilliant. Loads and loads of... Go on, Sam. Two. You haven't got two squirrels and two dolphins, but you've got two animals that are your favourite animals. There we go. Um, Sam likes squirrels and dolphins. Brilliant. Well, do you know, um, as we think about this um, series, we're going to be reminded of this today uh, from the start of Genesis. Um, God made something as special as all those places are and as special as all those things are, those animals are. The Bible says God made something even more special than that, special than rocks and rivers and snakes and squirrels and jaguars uh, and dogs and yellow belly sapsuckers. I thought if Toby answered, that might have been, um, might have been Toby's um, answer. There we go. Uh, because the Bible says, God made us. Is that the next um, slide, Toby? There we go. I am made by God. You are made by God. Sometimes we, we try and get our identity, don't we, from things that we can do. Lots of us can do different things. Some of us are better at doing certain things than, than, other, than other people. Um, we get our sense of identity from our achievements, maybe. Uh, and we worry and we get sad when, when people don't think we're as good as we thought we were, or all those kinds of things. But the Bible says the best way to answer that question, the best way to know who you are, the best place to put your identity is in the God who made you. You are made by God. And that means you belong to him. We're going to think about this. You belong to him, and you are precious to him. And like I said... Um, Annabelle this morning is a brilliant little uh, visual aid illustration of this. She's not listening to me, but I can tell her that she is 
made by God. She belongs to God. She was made to be in God's family. Uh, He's given her a family, but he's made her to be uh, in his family, friends with him. Uh, And Jesus makes that possible. So it's God who gives us life. Uh, And in the introduction to our baptism, it reminds us that it's Jesus who gives us new life. Uh, God so wants you to belong to him, to be in his family, that he not only made you, that he sent Jesus so you could be in his family. And as we come to uh, baptize Annabelle, we're going to be praying that Annabelle would grow up to trust in Jesus, uh, that, to believe that God made her, gave her life, and to believe that he can give her new life in Jesus. Toby, do you want to put the next um, uh, slide on? Here we go, and the next one as well. I'm going to read um, this little, uh, these words of introduction. So our Lord Jesus Christ, he suffered death upon the cross and rose again from the dead for the salvation of his people. Baptism is the outward sign of what we receive for ourselves when we respond in faith. We're united with him in his death, and we are granted forgiveness of sins. We are raised with Christ to new life in the Spirit. Those words of introduction are saying as we come to baptize Annabelle, there's there's a whole load of things that we're going to do and say lots of picture language that that remind us of what is right at the heart um, of the Christian message, that you can know the God who made you through Jesus. Uh, And we're going to use water. Um, This water is a picture uh, of the washing and the new life that God can work in our hearts. So I'm going to ask um, Kieran and Nikki and Annabelle and our four godparents. Let's come out, come out to the front, bring your, bring your um, order of service. Come and stand with me at the front. Brilliant. Great. Do you want to sort of, if um, mum and dad, you come round here, then godparents spread, spread round like that. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's great to, great to have you here. So let me say these words. Faith is a gift of God to his people. People of God, will you welcome Annabelle and uphold her in your prayers and encourage her to love and to follow Jesus? And we all say the words in bold together. With the help of God, we will. Brilliant. I'm going to come to you, Kieran and Nikki, uh, and godparents. As you bring Annabelle to baptism, you must affirm your allegiance to Jesus Christ and your rejection of all that is evil. You must bring Annabelle up to fight against sin and to follow Christ. So we're going to um, uh, use some words of confession. I'm going to ask um, some questions. I think um, we're going to ask um, Kieran and Nick, if you're happy, and godparents to affirm these things. Um, But this is an opportunity for all of us, to be honest, uh, before God. So if you can uh, join in your heart. Have you got the next slide, um, Toby? Here we go. Join in the words in bold if you feel able to um, uh, do that in your heart. So do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce deceit and the corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? I repent of them. And do you turn to Christ as Savior? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. And do you come to Christ the way the truth, and the life. I come to Christ. Would you stand, congregation? Would you stand uh, with uh, Nikki and Kieran and the godparents, and we're going to affirm our faith together. Again, let me ask us these questions. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. And do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I said there were uh, various um, uh, symbols that we're going to use in our baptism uh, service. Um, the first um, symbol is the water. So I'm going to pray. Do you want to sit down? Sorry, have a, have a seat so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to pray. This is, um, this is water that um, you could wash your hands with, water that we could make a cup of tea with afterwards, but we're going to pray that it would be a picture for us of what God can do, not just on the outside, but on the inside, in our hearts, to give us new life. So, Father, we pray that as we baptise Annabelle, 
in this water, that the water would be a picture of the new life you offer us. You made us, you gave us life and breath and bodies and everything, but you offer us new life in Jesus, in relationship, restored relationship with you. And so we pray that we would see the symbolism in the picture in this baptism this morning. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now then, let's put some water in here. Mum and Dad, is Annabelle going to come to me? We're going to try. Yes. Great. Brilliant. There we go. Always just worth checking it's not freezing cold or boiling hot. There you go. Hello. Are you going to come to me? Look at that. Fantastic. This is always where the microphone gets tricky, isn't it? There we go. Okay, fantastic. You see all these people? I've got a little candle up here, so we want to see your dress go... Kieran and Nikki, do you want to um, name your daughter, full name? Michelle. Annabelle Michelle. Inman. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So, Annabelle Michelle Inman, I baptise you in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit. That's the water. Here's the second symbol, the sign of the cross that Jesus died on to offer us new life. So, Annabelle, I sign you with the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. I'm going to click it on, Toby, to the next slide. And we say together, fight bravely under his banner against sin, the world, and the devil. And continue Christ's faithful soldier to the end of your life. So we've had the water, that wonderful picture of, of new life, of washing, of the uh, symbol of the cross where Jesus died to offer that new life. And this is the third uh, symbol in our little baptism. Here we go. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So we're going to give you this candle. We might give it to mum and dad to look after. But you can um, keep this candle. You can use it. You can have it lit sometimes. But every time you see it, we pray that you'd remember that Jesus is the light of of the world. God promises to deliver us from the dominion of darkness and to give us a place in the kingdom of his Son. Jesus is the light of the world. Walk in his light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Who do we trust? I know we trust Jesus, that's the right answer. But um, Dad, I'm going to give it to you. Okay, feel free to pop it out, watch the wax, and um, yeah, <laughs> don't burn yourself. Brilliant. Um, I think um, it'd be great to give a little clap, wouldn't it, for Annabelle? There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Done really well. Um, we've done one last little thing to give you. Here we go, Annabelle. We'd love to give you um, a gift from St. Stephen's. We might give this one to Mum to hold. But we're going to give you a Bible, children's Bible, and we're going to ask Mum and Dad, and we're going to ask Godparents. You know that in the contract, in the small print, babysitting is Friday and Saturday weekly. <laughs> um, there you go. But it, when you are... Uh, with Annabelle and looking after her, you can read her the stories of Jesus, the God who made her, and the Jesus, the Saviour who died out for her, so she can belong to God. Brilliant. There we go. Can we go back to, back to Mum? Okay. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You can go and uh, take a seat. You can watch yourself on the candle. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Kerry is going to come and um, pray, uh, pray for Annabelle and her family, and uh, to pray for us as well. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for Annabelle. We thank you that she is so precious to her family and her godparents. We thank you that she is precious to us as a church family. And we are so very thankful that she is precious to you. Thank you that you know Annabelle and the plans that you have for her. We thank you for her family and godparents who have promised today to love and support her as she grows. We thank you that you show us through your words in the Bible that you care deeply about who we are and how we live. We pray that you would help us all to listen to who you want us to be and how you want us to live. Thank you, God, that we can bring all things to you in prayer that you know just what we need and when we need it. We think now of people who are sad 
or lonely or ill or in pain and ask that you help them to know that you are with them, you love them and you are for them. And help us too to know how to love and support those people. As life everywhere is precious because it is designed and made by you, we pray for those who are in power around the world, that they would make good decisions that support the people they serve, that you would surround them with people who give good advice and are filled with grace and compassion. And finally, Lord, we pray just before the children go to the groups that they would have ears to hear and hearts to learn. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as Kerry um, prayed, the children are going to go over to um, the hall for their group. Um, so um, if you're used to doing that regularly, yeah, we're going to sing as the, as the children go. Uh, if you're used to going over to the hall, do, um, uh, do go now. Um, if you're here um, uh, and it's your first time at St. Stephen's, you're very welcome to go over. Um, parents, you can take them over or send them over, uh, and um, uh, that would be great. So they have their activity in the hall. Great. <coughs> we're going to... Um, sing uh, together as the children are heading out and uh, we're going to sing a wonderful song that points us uh, to uh, Jesus who is strong and kind. Let's uh, stand together and sing. seat and uh, Andy's 
going to come and read to us. You can, um, if you want to find and follow the reading, which would be great, be really helpful for me as I explain it. Um, the page numbers up there, page three, um, right at the start. No excuse for not finding it. So our reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Andy, thank you very much. Well, like I said, do keep that passage um, open. We're going to think about it um, together. Let me pray for us for God's help. Father God, if you are our maker, then it's right to look to you for our identity and our reason and our purpose. And so we pray as we look at your word, help us, teach us, lead and guide us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look out, because here I come. I'm marching to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no Apologies, this is me. I won't sing the next bit. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that is, um, do you recognize it from The Greatest Showman? Have you got the, um, I haven't got the clicker. There we go. There we go, the theme tune from uh, The Greatest uh, Showman. I make no apologies. This is me. I want to suggest this morning as we start this series thinking about identity that that song is more than just an anthem to one uh, blockbuster musical. It's become, if you like, the anthem of our day and our culture. Who am I? If that's the question, how would, you, how would you answer it? Well, I think our culture would answer it proudly like this. I am free to be who I want to be. I make no apology. This is me. And it certainly wasn't, um, wasn't our contemporary culture that discovered the uh, the kind of inner you, the inner self. I began our whole service with a verse from the Psalms. No, Psalm 139. If you read the Psalms, if you love the Psalms, you'll know they're full of, of deeply personal, uh, deeply um, honest, reflective, emotional words. But our modern world today, I want to say, our culture today, perhaps more than any point in history, has shifted how you answer that question. Who are you? Because we no longer just acknowledge that we kind of have an inner me, inner you, an inner self. We no longer just acknowledge that inner self. We have given it authority. We've made it authoritative. We've given it the decisive role in determining our identity. And so, I mean, words like this kind of ring true, don't they, for today? To be authentic. That, that word gets used loads. To be authentic, to be truly who I am, to be true to the real me, the inner me, I've got to express what I feel in here. And I mustn't go against it because it's, well, that's the authority. I texted my, uh, my mum earlier this week to, to check 
uh, when my two granddads uh, were born. And it turns out it was five years apart, 1915 and 1920. Just think of the shift, the massive shift that's happened in that sort of just over 100 uh, years. Imagine my two granddads watching TV with you in your lounge today. I think they would be shocked at quite a lot of stuff, certainly quite a lot of stuff that's no longer after 9 o'clock. I think probably really confused. And I imagine lots of us would say, as we think about our culture and the things we see, the things we're told, maybe you feel confused. But whatever you make it, this um, unquestionable authority that, that our self, our inner self, has been kind of given, awarded by culture today, that is all around us. That's just the, it's the air that we breathe. It's in the songs that are in our films and musicals and um, I guess um, uh, Annabelle might be a little bit too young for The Greatest Showman, but um, probably not for Elsa and Frozen. Here we go, just bringing it down a level. Show yourself, step into your power. You're the one you've been waiting for. How about that? That's what our culture is saying to our kids. You're the one that you've been waiting for. And Disney isn't just saying, you've got emotions, don't kind of squash them. Disney's saying that if you want to know the real you, you've got to be true to your feelings, true to the inside. And after, actually, it's offering the power of, of self-actualization. Don't let anybody else tell you who to be. You get to decide who you are. You can form your identity. I get to make my image. I get to make myself in my own image. And this is what we're going to be thinking about. We're going to be thinking about our image, our identity. And we're going to go to God's word because as Christians, we believe God speaks to us, don't we, in the, in the Bible. And so as we think about this question, who are you? Who am I? What is my identity? What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to flourish in the way God designed? We're going to go to God's word to see what God says to us. If he made us, he's the maker, he's the owner He's got the authority to do that, hasn't he? And the first bit of foundation that God gives us, that the Bible gives us, in those very first uh, verses that we've read from the first chapter of the first book of the Bible um, this morning, uh, we discover this, that we were, um, we're not made in our own image. We are made by a creator in God's image. So here's our first little uh, heading. We are um, created. God says, verse 26 and 27, let us make man in our image in our likeness. Verse 27, God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created them. Now, there's all sorts of ways, aren't there, you could answer that question. If I, if I came round to each of us and I said, who are you? Um, I guess some of us might, um, might answer by um, talking about our job, what you do, how much you earn. Some of us might talk about our background, uh, where we're from, we're proud of that, heritage and all that. St. George's Day, there we go, is that, um, there we go. Uh, some of us might find our identity in our looks, uh, in the things that we're good at, our kind of attributes and skills. Uh, do you feel young and strong? All those years uh, long gone, find something else to identify. Increasingly in our society, it's bisexuality, isn't it? Gay, straight. Or by successes, I'm a winner, I'm an achiever, and I could take you home and I could show you my shelf of all the things that I've done, the certificates and the medals that I've got in life. And all those things, they definitely shape us, don't they? They shape our experience, they shape um, part of who you are, makes you, you, and uh, different to me. We've got different uh, backgrounds and experiences. But much, much more fundamentally, as we come here to God's Word, the Bible starts not with criteria, like those things, jobs, backgrounds, looks, skills, uh, success. The Bible, well, those things can be compared, can't they? And actually, if you try and form your identity from those things, from looks, influence, friends, achievement, actually that can breed real massive insecurity. I think it is in our culture, breeding insecurity, anxiety, stress. But the Bible says, instead, you are God's wonderful design. You are created. You are made by God. 
And I want to say, say one of the brilliant things about looking to God to give us our identity is it's not dependent on you. It's not dependent on you trying to find it and discover it and be true to it on the inside. Uh, who is the real me? I think that question is, is crushing our culture today. What if the authentic me is not living the life I was meant to live? What if the authentic me, Matt Graham, wasn't meant to marry Anna? And the whole of my life has gone off on this kind of tangent. What if the real me wasn't meant to be a man? What if the real me should have been a violinist or a van driver and not a vicar? You can start to see how it introduces questions, isn't it? Uncertainty, anxiety and stress. Who am I meant to be? Here's the good news from God's word. You don't have to create who you are. Who are you? You are made by God, God says. Handmade. That's more Psalm 139, isn't it? Handmade wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made by a dependable creator. But it gives you a wonderful, secure sense of identity. You can't lose it when you use, lose your looks. If you root your identity in your looks. You can't lose it when you lose your job or when you stop achieving and being as good at the things that you used to be good at. It's okay. Because you're made by God. And you'll always be his creature. Kieran and oh, Nikki's back in as well. And God, Godparents. Um, I imagine, maybe, maybe not a conversation, but maybe it's something you've said to Annabelle, that, you know, um, grown-ups do this thing, don't they? They see a child dancing, and they say, oh, you can be a dancer when you grow up. Um, or they do a bit of art, you know, on the kitchen wall, I mean, on the paper, um, on the table. And you say, oh, you're going to be an artist um, when uh, you grow up. Well, here's, here's a great thing you could say to Annabelle and to bring her up to know. Here is the root and the source and the foundation of her unquestionable value. And I know you value her. That's part of why you're here today, isn't it? But her deepest value comes from the fact that she's made by God. Wow, handmade by a creator God, fearfully and wonderfully made. And as she grows up, I want to say that is the best, the, the most solid foundation you could give her. A rooted, confident identity because she is made by God. She doesn't have to go and find that inside her. And I want to say that this is a huge part of what makes thinking about identity as God gives us our identity really good news. It's part of the better story. A better story than our modern culture is telling us and, uh, and telling our kids perhaps even more loudly than to us. Because I want to say it takes away the massive burden that our children are being told that they can create their own identity. Find the you inside of you. You decide who you are. It means they actually are being asked to create themselves. Do you notice that? They're actually being asked to create themselves or to conform themselves to the, to the ideas and the spirit of the age. And at some level, I think that sounds quite loving. You know, you're free to be you, be whoever you want to be. Don't let anyone tell you who you should be. Sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds freedom, and it sounds loving, and I want to say it's a burden. It's a burden our culture's putting on our kids, especially. It's a burden you don't need to feel, because God made you. There is your deepest, most secure identity. And we get it, don't we, here in these um, verses. What identity, what, what image are we made in? Verse 26 and 27 is our next heading. We're made uh, by God, but we're made like God. Verse uh, 26, God said, let us make human beings or mankind in our image, in our likeness. I don't know if you've um, watched the BBC Earth documentary, What Does It Mean to Be um, Human? Uh, it takes us back in the sort of description, it takes us back 100,000 years to the African savannah, uh, along with a whole um, host um, of other primates, and it says the thing that makes us different, human beings, homo sapiens different, is, well, primarily three bits of luck. That's how the BBC puts it. We happen to be taller, so you can kind of stand up on the, uh, on the sands and you can see what's going on, see the enemies coming. You happen to have bigger brains uh, than some of the others, and we happen to have hands. We can stand on two feet, which leaves our hands free, 
And that means we can do all kinds of things. We can craft tools and we can work the land and make utensils and, and weapons uh, and, and do art and that kind of stuff. Are those the only things, three kind of fluky, lucky accidents? Are they the only things that make us unique? Well, no, God says your uniqueness, your identity, it comes from something far more significant because out of all of the creation, and Genesis 1 listed it, and we didn't read it all, but you could read all the things, the stars and the light and the sun and the moon and the, the fishes in the sea and the animals on the land and the birds in the air, puffins and all the rest of them as well. Uh, some estimates have 10 million plus um, species, they think, uh, loads that we haven't found yet. But our uniqueness as humanity as man and woman is that we are made in God's image. The only thing out of all creation that's made like God. I've used this um, illustration before, but I think it's um, helpful. I don't know if you've ever been somewhere with um, a fantastically ornate decorative ceiling. Uh, this is somewhere in um, Italy, Siena, I think. Um, a few things are going to happen, aren't they? If you go to this building and you want to see and enjoy the ceiling, you're either going to get a crook in your neck, crook in your neck, crook, uh, crook. Um, you're going to bump into someone else who's having a look at the ceiling, um, or you're going to bump into some other expensive architect, uh, a bit of architecture um, and hurt yourself. And so um, I can't remember where it is, but in somewhere like this, what they've done is they have put mirrors on trolleys. So as you pay your money and go in, you can buy a guidebook over here, and you can buy a trolley. And the trolley's got a mirror on it. And it's brilliant, because as you walk around with the trolley, you get to look in the mirror, and the mirror is reflecting the amazing, beautiful, decorative ceiling. So you, you don't bump into Pete and Rosie over here, and you don't bump into Henry over here, but you get to enjoy the fantastic glory and splendor of the ceiling above you. And Genesis 1 says God has done that all over his planet by putting you in the world. He's created you in his image to be his image bearer, to display his likeness, so that as you walk around Prenton, or if you walk around some of those places you'd love to go, like Canada and anywhere else, Skipton, go to Skipton. Go to Skipton and see the people walking around Skipton, and as you look at them like a mirror, they are reflecting something of the likeness and the glory and the majesty of the God who made them. So we're meant to say, wow. I'm made like God. What a honor and a privilege. But what does that mean, to be made in God's image? Well, loads has been written about that. I think from our verses here, two things, um, two things are really clear and two things that we, that we have to see from these verses. Uh, and the first is that the God who made us is an us. And we often refer to this, but we don't make it explicit. So whenever we pray, and we pray to God as Father, Son, and Spirit, we affirmed it in, in the baptism as we affirmed what Christians believe. We believe in God, Father, God the Son, and God the, uh, the Spirit. But the Bible says, and these verses here affirm it, that God is an us. Do you notice it in verse 26? Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image image. The infinite God who was there even before the beginning. He has no beginning. He's eternal. He wasn't lonely. That's not why he made you. Okay, he was in a loving relationship for all eternity past. And the Bible unpacks that for us, that, that he is Father, Son, and Spirit. But it means to be made in God's image, well, it's to be made like God to relate and we are meant to relate to each other, and we'll see this a bit more next week. We're made for a relationship we're going to think about next week. Uh, verse 27 says we, uh, he made us male and female. But I want to say even more fundamentally, he made us like him to belong to him, to relate to him as God. And so you could think about that like this. You could think about it in a sort of possession sense, that if God made you, well, he owns you. Uh, you're his possession. God made you, he, he owns you. And we'll see some of those, we go through our series, we'll see some of the massive implications of that. If God's the maker, the creator, if he designed you and made you, well then how you live, how you live best, how you live to flourish, well it's going to be according to God's design, isn't it? God made human beings. We should live according to his ways. But there's also another sense that God, uh, who is relationship, uh, God who is relational made us to relate to him. And that is, 
That is that it means you are precious. Because it means he made you to relate to him. He wants to know you. I don't know if you ever made something. Perhaps you've got something stuffed away somewhere that you made at school in you know, one of the early classes. Perhaps a Christmas decoration that occasionally still makes it onto the tree and it's in tatters. Sometimes when we make things, we, we kind of forget about them, don't we? Abandon them. Well, God says, no, I made you and I made you to belong to me and you are precious. You are not just precious because of the things that you can do. You're not just precious because... You might be able to do things that other people think are important, that you might have influence. And those things might be true, and they might be part of who you are, but your ultimate preciousness and value and worth comes from this wonderful truth, that you are made by God. He gave you life. He gave you a body. He gave you breath. He gave you everything. He made you to belong to him. You are precious. So Kieran and Nikki, again, keep coming to you. We've got our visual aid, Annabelle, today. I imagine you're already teaching her lots about relating to others. No, share the toys. (laughs) The whole chocolate egg's not for you, all that kind of stuff. Be kind at nursery. I guess the big question is, will you teach her to relate to the God who made her? She was made to be in relationship with him, just as all of us were, made by God, made like God, made to belong to him. And if you're here and you doubt, you doubt that you are precious and loved by the God who made you. We're, we're still in the season of Easter, aren't we? We've just been celebrating Jesus' death and his resurrection again. It proclaims to us that you are loved by God. You see, God not only made you, but he sent his son so that even when you turn your back on him as your maker, even when you say, actually, I don't want you to tell me how to live, even though you're my God and you should, God showed his love by sending Jesus to die for you. He loves you so much. He wants you to belong to him so much. You are precious to him. More quickly, as we start to draw to a a close, here's the second big way, I think, Um, that we can understand being made in God's image or likeness. And again, Andy read it for us, uh, verses 28 onwards. So the writer says, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea. Rule over the birds of the air. and Rule over every living creature that moves on the ground. So we're made by God. We're made like God. But we're made uh, like God to rule to rule. We're made to relate to each other, but we're also made to rule the creation that God has put us in. Part of our dignity as human beings, as man and woman, part of our value uh, is that we are made uh, to uh, look after, to take care of the world that God made. He gives us a really dignified responsibility. We are not the creators. We don't get to decide all the rules, but we are the custodians, if you like of the world that God made. And you can start to see, you can start to see even even in the time we've looked at this this morning, that when we get our identity right, instead of looking inside us, when we look to God to give us our identity, we also start to work out not just who we are, but what we're for, our purpose, and why we're here. And we'll unpack lots of this. And, And we start to see here, we'll come back to this again next week, but that it's as man and woman that we fulfill that purpose, integral to being made in God's image and to fulfilling our purpose and our role, uh, is that we do it uh, together, man and woman, as God created. Um, final um, illustration as we, uh, as we finish. Um, when the first plastics were invented, I, I don't know who said this, um, but here's a, a quote from the marketing of plastics when they, they kind of first appeared uh, on the scene. They were marketed as the material as a, of a thousand uses. They could be shaped or molded into almost anything, providing endless possibilities. And the marketing goes on to say that, you know, now we're free from the constraints of natural resources, endless possibilities. And someone's written a book about identity and about who you are and about how you'd answer that question. And they called it Plastic People. I think it's very clever and very helpful. Because it's a great little summary, plastic people, of of what culture is saying you are. 
rather than being someone formed in the image of a, a good, kind, gracious, relational, giving, loving God. Actually, you are like a lump of plastic, culture wants to say to you. And you can shape yourself into absolutely anything you like. And culture wants to bang the drum and say, that is great, let's celebrate that you are a piece of plastic. And I want to say celebrate because you are made by God. And here's the foundation. We are not plastic. We're not to shape our own identity, to mold ourselves into whatever we fancy today with all the ramifications and implications of, of that. We are to shape our identity around this wonderful truth. Who are you? Well, I'm made by God. I'm made like God. I belong to God. And that means you are precious. Precious. Well, let me pray for us. We're going we're gonna to come to lots more implications um, from all of this as we, as we go on. Um, I'm going to pray for us. And then I thought, um, Kerry prayed for us earlier, but um, I thought we would um, use the Lord's Prayer together um, and perhaps to pray the Lord's Prayer having been reminded that there's a, a Father, a Creator Father God in heaven. And we pray in the Lord's Prayer, don't we not? Um, well, Jesus said in the garden, not my will, uh, but your will uh, be done. In the Lord's Prayer, we, we echo that. Your will be done in heaven. And earth. that is a massive prayer to pray because you're saying, God, you're God and I'm not. God, you get to shape me, not me. You are the creator. So let me pray and then um, we'll use the words of the Lord's Prayer on the screen. Our Father, we sang that line earlier, the wonders of creation, and uh, we want to say that you are worthy and deserve all the glory and praise for all that you made. And we want to praise you that you made us. We want to praise you that you gave us life and breath and, and bodies. You made us who we are. Praise you for each other this morning, so varied and different, but all made by you. We want to praise you that you love us, that we are precious to you. We can know that because you made us and we can know it because you sent your son to redeem us. And we pray individually as a church that we would be willing to not shape ourselves but have you shape us. To have you tell us what it means to be human, what it means to flourish. And so humble us and help us, we pray. Help us root our identity in you. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We're going to uh, sing uh, a song. It's uh, a new song, but um, it kind of felt like we couldn't not um, try and learn it and sing it, because it says, I am who you say I am. And the you, unsurprisingly, uh, is not Facebook, Instagram, social media, culture. Um, it is God. I am who you say I am. Shall we stand? And uh, let's sing together.
take a seat. Uh, well, the um, adverts were, um, a few advertisements were scrolling around as we came in, but a few reminders, our youth group has meeting tonight, yes, um, I haven't met for a couple of weeks, but they're meeting at 7.30. Um, tonight, and they're going to be thinking about this whole issue of identity as well, so do pray for them and their leaders. Um, Tuesday evening, uh, this week, is our annual meeting. Um, if, you, um, if you are weighing up whether you could serve, um, and you've emailed me this week, come and grab me and, and chat to me about that. Uh, but 7.30 in here in church, um, and uh, we'll hear um, a report on our finances and um, uh, various um, important things like that. We're also going to think a little bit about um, the future and where we're going and and what's next. So um, come, come and join us, come and pray, and uh, that'll be a um, really important evening together, 7.30 Tuesday. Um, two um, other things uh, in the diary, and we've got um, a, a tea, a cream tea, in the Vicarage Garden, if it's sunny in the hall, uh, if not for um, the coronation weekend. So on the Sunday afternoon, uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, we'll, pop a, we'll pop a sign-up sheet at the back um, next week, but uh, if you want to bring um, friends, neighbors, if you think they'd like to come, uh, for scones and cream and tea, um, they'd be very welcome uh, to join us. That would be great. Uh, and there's not a slide for this, but um, on Saturday morning, um, uh, if you feel you could give up a bit of time, an hour, hour and a half or so, um, followed by refreshments, uh, to come and do a bit of uh, just a working party, kind of clearing up sort of stuff in church. Um, Pete, um, uh, Chris and Rosie are organizing that, so um, just let them know if you can come. In fact, there's a sign-up sheet for that. You can pop your name down at the back. It'd uh, be great to chat to you um, over refreshments, so don't rush away, do stay. Um, and uh, if you would like to join me for communion, that will be straight away, um, just in the Lady Chapel uh, over here, just at the end of the service. Do come uh, through for that. Well, we've been thinking about God, our creator, God, our maker. We're going to sing a final hymn, and it's got this great line. He is our maker, defender, redeemer. And the last bit is incredible. Friend, you can know the God who made everything and made you. Maker, Defender, Redeemer, French. We stand, we'll sing together. Oh, worship the King.
praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Father, we praise you. Praise you for who you are. Praise you that there is no one like you, our creator. And we pray that you'd help us remember that this week. And in all we do, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please do be seated and stay for tea and coffee as well.